All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's 6.01 on Wednesday the 12th. It's the Rutland Board of Selectmen. Um, first, I have to open the Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, I declare this meeting open. At this point in the meeting, I will uh, entertain a motion to waive the reading of the remote Zoom meeting instructions. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Hearing none. Um, and Carol, feel free to just pipe in because I, I can only see you in a small corner on the middle of the screen. Uh, hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Benoit? Aye. Uh, Clark? Here. Nichols? Uh, Whiteman? Whiteman, aye. And Rasidi, aye. Motion carries unanimous. Okay, we do have to open. <clears throat> we have a public hearing. It's the only item on our agenda uh, regarding the demolition of the remains of the Rutland uh, prison camps by DCR. Um, I hereby declare this hearing open. I don't think I need a motion to open the hearing. Okay, so the hearing is open. Uh, a couple quick things. I know there's a lot of you here. Um, so what I'd like to do is, because this is an interesting format and you're all in Zoom, um, I want to give everyone an opportunity to speak. If you'd like to speak, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom, and I'm going to hand over the allowing people to speak to Peter so he can recognize who has their hand raised. And then prior to speaking, please name and address for the record. Um, <clears throat> just a quick quick recap. This is again about the, the demolition, proposed demolition of the prison camps. Uh, this is something that's come up. Um, I know Jeff in the Historical Commission uh, and Peter's on here too, I believe, has done a pretty good job um, getting the information out, getting the word out about the hearing tonight. Uh, we do have a pretty large audience. Um, I know that we also are being joined by Representative Kim Ferguson and Senator Ann Gobi. Um, so before we get started, I would like to introduce them um, and give them the opportunity to address the, uh, the crowd here if they so choose. Sure, Senator, do you wanna go first? Yeah, turn on your mic, Senator. Go ahead, Rep, you're already <laughs> okay, I'll go. Um, it is great to see everyone here tonight. I keep scrolling through so I can see the faces new and um, some very familiar faces. So uh, it's a pleasure being here tonight. And um, certainly Senator Gobi and I were made aware of this situation, uh, kind of caught us off guard um, when uh, member Stillings had uh, let us know about this. And then we had a call from a telegram reporter about it. So we were not aware that this situation was happening until I think the time of a hearing that you had with your historic commission, and then became aware of what the plan was uh, being proposed. So we are certainly here to listen. Um, I know Senator Gobi can fill you in on a couple of things that we've done already. Um, but certainly we share many of the concerns that I know we're going to hear tonight. And again, we're here to gather information, but also to see what next steps can possibly take place. And I'd like to welcome um, our newly elected selectman, Benoit, as well. It's my first time attending a meeting with you. So congratulations and congratulations to Leah as well. And, and thank you. Yes, it, congrats. It's an interesting time to be on any board. So, and thank you. And, and uh, congratulations to everyone that, um, made the effort to put their name on the ballot. It's not easy running, especially in uh, the climate that we've had the last several years. So thank you for putting yourself out there. We appreciate that. Um, as, as Kim mentioned, um, we were caught off guard. We, we did not receive the courtesy of a call from the people at DCR. Yesterday, the rep and I were on a call. Uh, we had asked for a meeting which took forever for them to get back to us. Yesterday, we met with uh, Dan Clark, who, who's with the Watershed Division at DCR. Many of you already know him, as well as Craig Cashman. Craig is a government liaison officer for DCR. John Scannell, also with uh, DCR. Many of you know, he's been at meetings, and the Assistant Commissioner, Nick Gove. And uh, Kim and I did not mince words yesterday. We made it uh, very well known that we were not happy um, being kind of an afterthought on being made aware of uh, what their plans were. 
and uh, that by no means did we expect them to be having uh, the last word on this. We told them about the meeting that was ha taking place tonight. Um, the, uh, Assistant Commissioner Go said, well, make sure that the, the people know that, you know, we'll put everything on hold. And I just about laughed that off. I said, well, I would say that's the least you can do. Well, there have been no discussions, not, not real discussions taking place. Um, they intimated that the historical um, society had given some sort of tacit um, approval, which I found hard to believe. And um, as well as they mentioned about um, paperwork that they had sent to the Mass Historical Commission on things. Again, uh, the rep and I asked them, we wanted to see what they had sent. We have not received that yet. Uh, we were very curious what may have been sent to the Historical Commission. In addition, they spoke about um, the graffiti, um, talking about uh, that hate groups that were involved in the graffiti. And we both asked them, well, if you were very concerned about graffiti, why wasn't the police chief notified? As far as I know, he was never even called. And if you think it's national hate groups, which is horrendous, what about getting the district attorney's office involved, the state police, the attorney generals? They were silent, absolutely silent. So um, we, it, it was a very, um, I don't know, Kim, would you say contention? They, they, they knew we were not happy. There was a lot of silence coming from DCR and yesterday. And I know that um, Rep Ferguson has also reached out to the governor's office to make sure that they were aware of how we had been treated and uh, that we are not pleased with the process thus far. So yes, we are definitely here to listen. Uh, Kim and I have already discussed, as you know, the Senate budget came out yesterday mm -hmm. and I am prepared um, to make an amendment to that budget, which I intend to do based mm -hmm. on what we talk about tonight. But um, the gist of it will be that there'll be no action being taken by DCR until um, we can figure something out and in addition to that, I intend to put a line item in for funding to, um, if they have to fence things off, whatever it may be, um, that they can do. One of the things yeah. that, that really upset us as well is when they mm -hmm. talked about the graffiti and they talked about some of the problems there. Again, um, from speaking with Chief Monaco, they, they haven't received these reports of all these problems. but. It, as you know, when we had an issue with the watershed last year, they're very quick to put up cameras to try to catch people riding a bicycle. And yet, when we've got people doing graffiti or whatever else it might be, where's the camera? No camera. So anyway, um, there are many things that we were very upset about, and uh, we did make it known. So very happy to hear what you can offer us tonight and how we can be helpful as well. So thank you. Thank you. Uh and again, uh, thank you to, uh, to Rep Ferguson and Senator Goby for uh, really throughout the whole year being tremendous advocates for this town um, in this community and our constituents, um, just fantastic job. Um, and just to echo uh, Senator Goby's comments, I mean, this is something that caught us by surprise as well. Um, this is something that was first brought to the town through the historical commission. I think we're given some sort of preliminary heads up from DCR that decisions have already been made and that the Mass State Historical Commission had been out there unbeknownst to the town uh, to take a look at the site. So uh, the town also feels like we were not included in this decision, which is kind of why we're all here tonight. So with that being said, I'd like to open it up to the public. Um, because we do have a lot of people, I'm just gonna ask, I wanna give everyone the opportunity, but please keep your comments if you could uh, brief. And while others are speaking, please, if you can keep your microphones muted so we don't get any feedback. Um, that being said, anyone that wants to speak, please use your hand raise feature in Zoom uh, and uh, Peter can let you in. Mr. Chair, uh, Ron, Tim was up first and then Jeff's. Okay, uh, Ron and then Jeff. Yeah, just a technical point, Mr. Chair. A number of times uh, you refer to the hand feature and those of us that are on Zoom all the time understand it. But for those of you that might be new to Zoom, put your mouse at the bottom of the boxes and you'll see something called the reactions click on reactions and it'll say raise or lower hand, raise hand, just click on that button and that's how you're, you'll then see a hand come up on your screen just so you guys understand how to use it, right? I can, I can see some of you. So if you start freaking out on the screen, I <clears throat> assume that means you haven't figured it out and I'll let you in anyway. So um, feel free to take that option as well. 
uh, Mr. Stillings. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for the opportunity to be heard. Uh, what a tremendous response from our state senator and state representative. Couldn't be more pleased and the response that we're getting from their offices. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jeff Stillings, 3 Lord Lane, also a member of the Rutland Historical Commission to which we have a quorum here. And also uh, reflect that we also have the president of the Rutland Historical Society here who can speak to those uh, two comments uh, referred that DCR had mentioned in there. Um, real brief that yes, this was brought to uh, the town's attention through the Historical Commission at a meeting where they wanted to, the DCR wanted to debrief the commission on their proposed demolition on there. Uh, the two concerns, primary concerns were one graffiti and the second public safety in there. So I, if I could through the chair, address both of those concerns by DCR. Uh, first of all, safety. Uh, in response, I requested uh, statistics from our RECC, Rutland Emergency Communication Center, Director Moriarty. Uh, he went back four years for calls for service, emergencies, calls for service over the last four years, including last year, which was the COVID uh, year. Uh, calls for service in the last four years at the prison camps were four uh, over the last four years. Compare that to calls for service at Devereaux, 182, Naquan, 7, Central Tree Middle School, 9, Glenwood School, 15, Marshfield, 2, and Memorial Field, 3. So the uh, safety concerns, in my opinion, based on hard data, real data, is unfounded in there unfounded based upon that concern. The second concern was graffiti. Of course, no one condone, condones hateful graffiti. Um, that, that's beyond, beyond discussion in there. But in response to that, I had a discussion with our sheriff, Sheriff Lou Evangelitis, uh, concerning that because the ruins were actually the sheriff's work farm back in the turn of the century. That's how we didn't have stores and Walmarts. Uh, they grew food and that's what they did. So there's a historical prominence to that area in there. And I talked to the sheriff and his, his, uh, he gave permission to relay his belief that he supports the preservation of this historical asset in that area. He supports that. And as far as the graffiti goes, the sheriff assured me that his community uh, response team, the community corrections team will be out there at your notice to go and whitewash all that uh, area of the ruins in there. And he would do so at least annually upon request. So I thank the, the sheriff uh, for his response on that. And lastly, as a member, speaking as a member of the Historical Commission, on April 23rd of this year, we did meet and we penned a letter, a unanimous letter from our commission, your town's commission, to the DCR, saying that we unanimously stand opposed to the DCR's proposal of demolishing the remaining ruins in there. And in addition, the Rutland Historical Commission specifically will seek to add the ruins to the Massachusetts Registry of Historic Places and Assets. So uh, thank the chair for the, for the time, the opportunity to be heard. I would ask that our Rutland Select Board concur with the opinion of the Rutland Historical Commission and uh, our state senator and our state representative and ask that an immediate stay, a cease and desist, uh, take place upon our historical assets uh, based upon this hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. I see a hand from uh, Paul. I believe it's Paul Matson. Yes, it is. Paul, you're on mute. All right. Oop. There we go. No. Paul, you're still on mute. Try again. I'm mute. There we go. Oh. One more time, Paul. That's it. Go ahead. Right okay. Yep. All right. Okay. I can echo what Jeff said. Um, Paul Matson, Birchwood Road, by the way. Uh, I've lived in this town for 76 years. I've seen a lot of incidents in the prison camp uh, firsthand as I was a firefighter and an EMT for a number of years. And so I know something about it. Um, graffiti. There's been graffiti there probably as long as I've been driving. So that's gotta be about what, 60 years or something like that. We'd go over the prison camp and there was spray painting on the walls of the, uh, of the uh, jail cells. And then there was some on the uh, vegetable cellar itself. So in other words, things have been pretty much the same over there for 
a long time. And so I just feel at this particular point in time, um, what is DCR doing? In other words, do they have the facilities or the capabilities rather of doing things, uh, 24 hour surveillance over there? And uh, Senator Gobi mentioned using cameras and whatnot. Um, that's probably a good idea, but you know, um, we've got to, you know, look into this thing. In other words, we're talking about preservation of something that's been in Rutland. My mother grew up outside of the prison camp um, in Coldbrook. And so, you know, there's a lot of history of it as far as I'm concerned. So at any point, I would really like to see something seriously get done about it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else with their hand raised? Anyone else would like to speak? Uh, Mr. Williams. Thank you, um, Charles Williams, better known as Dick. <laughs> Overlook Road, Rutland. Uh, I was very upset being on the Way River Watershed Advisory Committee for over 20 years and not being advised of this and getting wind of it. Uh, I sent a letter uh, or email to Jeff, uh, our chair, and asked for an in-person meeting at the prison camp. I was totally blown away and uh, I'm so, so upset that I started passing rumors that I want the town of Rutland to take the camp over. I am so upset with Dan. Um, <laughs> I gotta calm down. I was there today. I've seen graffiti like Paul has said. I've, I've been on a tour with the historic, uh, the society took us through there a long time ago. It was still an awesome place. And I tell you, um, if I, I've, I've asked, I don't know how many times that we're trying to get it together, that meeting, I am going to uh, really lay it out. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, if uh, Dan gets upset, I could care less at this stage of the game, uh, what he tried to pull last fall and, and now this, uh, I am not satisfied at all with the uh, operations from him. And one last thing I would like to say, DCR, conservation and recreation. I see DCR all over the place and they're doing a great job down south and every place else. But how about around here? I've never seen so many people use this property in my life yeah. as I have in this past year. So please stay on top of this. I will do my best to uh, uh, have a, a good talk with the uh, advisory committee when we do meet and it better be within the next week or two. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, address the group through the public hearing? I see uh, Ms. Judkins. I think you were on mute. There you go. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Sheila Judkins, 76 Wheeler Road, uh, the president of the Rutland Historical Society. So when I was, um, I'm also on the historical commission. So when we had the uh, commission meeting um, and heard of Dan Clark's um, proposal, um, I invited him to our uh, executive board meeting the following week because I felt that no one that I knew of was aware of this plan. And um, so when it was reported that the Historical Society was in favor, I think that's a little bit on the other side of, of our conversation. Um, it was all Zoom. He had um, his head ranger, Jenner Prashevsky, if I'm pronouncing her name or Prashevsky correctly. And um, yes, they discussed the graffiti 
on the main cell block that's the only standing piece as well as the uh, concrete barrier wall. We agreed um, as, you know, just in favor of that, the safety hazards of those underground passageways or tunnels definitely can uh, be an issue and we don't want that responsibility or, you know, have anyone um, be injured. Um, I did address Dan when he mentioned about the hate graffiti and whatnot, and I inquired if our local police department had been informed. And it was in my recollection that, you know, they really did not um, notify. And, and I get it because, you know, we do share our, our municipalities with, with other communities. And then I asked about the state police since, you know, we can't have our, our men and women in a cruiser going out the back roads of the Rutland prison camps when there could be more of a need. But, and what about the Rangers? What is their responsibility into their protection? And um, I mean, I would not, sorry, would not want to be sorry, put in that kind of situation if I was the head ranger, but I just felt that um, a lot of the, it, it was quick in haste to make this decision. And I finally, at the end of the meeting, I pretty much said to Dan, so this is, it sounds to me that this is pretty much a done deal. And he said, yes. So, but then, um, you know, finding out that not everybody was notified, then that puts a whole other piece in. And anyway. Thank you, Sheila. Certainly appreciate yeah. it. See a lot of faces on the screen. Anyone else wish to address? Is up again. Jeff. Uh, thank you for a second chance. I uh, appreciate that. Just want to follow up on uh, Dick Williams's comment and uh, in reference to you know, DCR overreach. We went through this this time last year when they were, they just nonchalantly said, oh, by the way, we are going to close off access to the prison camps. I still have 2000 signatures waiting to present to the DCR of uh, angry concerned citizens of this area adamantly opposed to any restriction to our lawful access to our state owned property out there. Um, that being said, <clears throat> we still have that same issue uh, with the gates. Some gates I see are open in there, but if you, uh, you know, go to the state park, it's still closed. And uh, so we still have that recurring issue and it all comes circles back to uh, the bigger picture of DCR overreach, DCR big brother, if you will, doing what they want and uh, without getting community input in there. And that's, that's still an unresolved issue. And I uh, just, again, want to thank uh, Ann Gobi who had uh, been front and center on that issue on that, but it's still as if we're not getting the respect that we deserve uh, from DCR with our concerns. Um, so thank you for that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stillings. All right. Anyone else in the crowd like to address the group? Uh, I see uh, Sheila, you have your hand up again. Thank you again for allowing me to, to speak on behalf of this issue. But I also want to bring um, the, the people here um, <clears throat> who may not know, um, one of our former uh, historical society members, Helen Viner, she was a curator, president, been part of our society for over 30 years, had passed a few years back. And her mission before of her passing was to rebeautify the um, prison camp cemetery, which consisted of, I believe, I might not be correct here, but 49 to 50 unmarked graves. And back in its original state, every grave had been marked with a wrought iron cross. But over years and time of vandalism, those crosses were then removed. 
So she worked diligently with DCR, Wear River Advisory. Um, this was when I first came on board uh, as president and vice president of the Historical Society. So she worked long, hard hours to even we had um, a company come in who were able to, um, oh gosh, what am I saying? Technology and finding out where these graves were and did the research to find the names to give that type of respect and recognition to these men. And I don't know, again, when we were at the historical commission meeting and hearing Dan Clark talk about the demolition and yes, preserving the root cellar with a uh, wrought iron gate, which I we totally agreed with, but it still really hits home and we hope that you take that all into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, Donna O'Brien. Uh, this is Peter Holmes. Uh, I'm Donna O'Brien's husband. Hi, and I just, I just wanted to, I, there are the various issues with this, um, the jurisdictional one and the safety one um, and the historical one, but there's one that isn't being addressed that I think should be, which is the artistic one. The, I'm an artist and photographer and I've taken nearly a hundred uh, photos of those graffiti. Graffiti can be an art form. And this, and the prison camp is a living work of art, constantly changing, but people go there and express themselves artistically. There's a, a right now there's a, an exhibition at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston of the graffiti artist, um, Jean-Michel Basquiat. And uh, it's a recognition that this kind of art can have uh, aesthetic value. That's all I want to say. I think that's a great point, <clears throat> Peter. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Peter Pacer, please. Yes, uh, Peter Pacer, 20 Highland Park Road. I'm the chair of the Rutland Historical Commission. And just figured I'd give a little background uh, from my end. When I was contacted uh, by Dan Clark, I uh, was uh, given word that he wanted to uh, speak with me regarding this. This was back around the end of February. And frankly, I'm very, I'm floored that State Senator uh, Gobi and Representative Ferguson, that none of these people, Wear River Watershed, that none of them were even contacted on this, that Frankly, from all I, from what I know, I think the historical commission might have been the one to finally get the word out. Um, I'm very, very shocked that that's the case. I, I think communication, the fact that communication could be a lot better on DCR's end, I think, is an understatement, a big understatement. Um, but. Uh, yeah, one of the things that came to mind, uh, number one, I, I know was mentioned was surveillance. I think, why not? Why not? Um, we've got we've got rangers at other state parks. From what I understand, why not Rutland State Park? It's a very, very well used, heavily traveled um, uh, site, and I think very much an asset, I think, for the state. Um, and, and I totally agree with, I believe it was uh, Senator Gobi who was uh, mentioning, why weren't these instances of the hate graffiti brought up with the DA's office, law enforcement? That makes absolutely no sense at all. Uh, and somebody really dropped the ball on that, in my opinion. We probably could have had more work done on that a lot sooner. And it probably wouldn't have just been DCR that was taking care of this. Um, another thing that came to mind, I when I first heard about it, I went up and I took a little look around uh, just to refresh my memory on the uh, on the site. One of the things that came to mind, I 
remember visiting a place called His Majesty's Fort at Crown Point, New York. I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but that is probably one of the places that most closely reminds me of the, uh, the prison camp site. It's, it's a much nicer, much older set of ruins. It's an old fort uh, going back to the colonial days. But the state of those structures are very similar from what I can tell to the prison camp. And they're still standing. And I could still walk around there. And there was no graffiti on there that I can remember at all. So it was very well maintained by the state of New York. Why can't we have an asset like that run by the DCR right here in our town? Bring visitors to the town. We're looking for, we're looking for business. We're looking for revenue. This is an opportunity right here. And if the state can help us out, um, we would, I think we'd, I think we'd be very appreciative of it. Excellent points, Peter. Um, I see uh, Katie Goheens. Hello, uh, my name is Katie Goheens. I live in Hubbardston. I've been a resident for about seven years. And just piggybacking off of everyone else's statement, um, I think this is pretty poorly communicated. You know, as someone who deals with project management for several years in my profession, um, you know, just as a local constituent not being notified, you know, and hearing everyone else who hasn't been notified, it makes me worried about what their plans are next and what what's going to come next. So um, it's really important, you know, I want to attend every single one of these and I really want to say thank you to Jeff for putting the word out for each of these issues and, um, you know, the whole Rutland Select Board and Historical, Historical Commission and um, also, as to what Jeff was saying with the signatures for the prison camp access or the, the gate access, at this, at this moment, Jeff had a petition circulating, a hard copy petition, but there was a, an online petition as well that stands at 3,500 signatures. And for this issue, just to save the prison camps, it is currently at 2,300 local constituents who are opposing this measure. So um, I adamantly oppose and I appreciate, you know, you guys putting this on and hearing us all out. And I definitely like to be involved in stopping this in any way possible. So thank you. Thank you, Katie. That is a good point. And, and just as a note, uh, the amount of signatures in, in towns this size is indicative of the, the response um, that this issue has gotten. So um, it's tough on issues to, to get that many signatures in towns this size so that that was well done and clearly the community it's something they're passionate about um is there anyone else uh, i see um teresa kane. teresa kane please yes hello uh teresa kane i'm here with my husband robert we're from barry um i just wanted to say a, a word about my own experience and then let my husband speak um i am over 60 and i started going to the prison camps probably age four or five I have family who live in Oakham and all of us kids and for years and years that was the place we would go and the elders would tell us about I don't know how many of the stories were true. <laughs> we, we got lots of um, kind of historical things and we had a place to go and uh, when we moved back when we moved up here a few years ago, it was a place we were able to go and I was able to share those memories and the idea of just tearing them down because there's graffiti and we can't monitor him, um, I'm, we're, I'm adamantly opposed as well as um, my husband's gonna say a few words. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Robert Kane from Barry Mass. Uh, I'd just like to say a few things uh, from a, a sportsman's perspective. I've been on the land for 45 years, using it seasonally for hunting recreational purposes. And uh, over those years, I've noticed a, a constant narrowing of our environmental police force uh, to be able to police these resources because of cutbacks and so forth, specifically for the environmental police. 
Um, the land we're discussing is actually DFG property. Of course, it's under the umbrella of DCR. But uh, we as sportsmen feel as though, kind of like the rest of you folks feel that we weren't really kept in the loop on this when actually it was our uh, license funding that funded the purchase of the property in the first place. Um, I wanted to make that point and, you know, with the graffiti, it, it just seems to me that it's a failure of DCR to provide enough law enforcement for the area. And it's been narrowed and narrowed and narrowed over the years. And now it's got to a point to turning into what it is. Thank you very much. Oh, and Thank on you. the gate thing, on the gate thing, um, I know uh, Sheila, I think, just said something about two or 3,000 signatures. I'm surprised it's not more than that. Um, is there anything in this that DCR kind of says if they can solve that problem with that, are we still going to be able to have our gates open in the future? I mean, you know, part of this thing, I think, evolved from DCR's inability to police that particular spot. Uh, and I would just like to, you know, through the negotiations with DCR, have some kind of a, uh, a you know, a little bit of something from them that we may not have to gate it off if we can police it the way we should be able to. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you very much. That's my first time on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have uh, Christian Santillo. Uh, Christian Santillo, Charnock Hill Road. Um, actually also a neighbor of uh, Ware River Watershed on probably all four sides of my house. So I'm in that property multiple times a week, if not more. Um, speaking just a little bit to Peter's point about bringing in traffic um, to the town in a good way, you know, I can certainly speak to the amount of interest people coming from other towns to visit and to explore. I um, wanted to talk just a little bit about the cultural aspect. You know, in addition to preserving it, I would actually like to even see better signs explaining the history of the area. You know, I know along our street we have signs that talk about the Revolutionary War well and other types of property, but there's really nothing there that explains, and I think that would probably enhance um, the experience there. And it's not just, you know, people see it as ruins and may not even understand what that means or the significance and the history behind it. Um, you know, as we're on the street, people prob people don't even really know that what the watershed land is. Most people think it's part of the park. It's not. DCR watershed land is very different. Um, so I would love to see, you know, not only the preservation of that area, but more explanation and more signs that I think provide historical information to, to visitors to help people appreciate where they are, what they're looking at, and not just see it as roads and, and ruins for people who are perhaps unaware of, of where they are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Pantos. Can you hear me all right? Yes. All right. Thank you, Mike Pant Michael Pantos Jr., Watson Lane, Rutland, Massachusetts. I'd like to voice my loud opposition to any changes to the uh, prison camps. I, being a town resident all of my life and having experience at multiple uh, DCR properties such as Wachusett Mountain and the Rutland State Park, I do not have a pleasant um, experience with DCR as it feels like even just over the past 20 years, they just keep narrowing down how much people can use the land and what they're allowed to use it for. Uh, as uh, cultural, uh, as the culture across our country uh, leans towards deleting history, uh, I think this is an awful thing to do, uh, to be a part of removing history, especially removing some a physical asset of history that we still have, that I remember uh, writing papers on the history of Rutland when I was in school in town, and we could even go and physically see um, historical aspects in the town. So I oppose any changes to these Rutland prison camps. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's just to, before we continue, it's kind of amazing 
uh, we're hearing very different perspectives. We have perspectives from students, from artists, from sportsmen. Um, it's just kind of amazing to see those different perspectives coming together on this one site uh, as a note. Um, I think at the bottom of my screen, I saw Mark, is it uh, Puteau? I can't read your name from here, but I see your hand up, sir. Yes, uh, Mark Foter, 85 Irish Lane in town uh, in, in Rutland. Uh, I, I would just like to speak up on, on a, a little background. For 18 months, I went to the Ware River Watershed Advisory Board meetings. I was not a member. I, I was just there. First, first went because they did not want horseback riders in there anymore, the DCR didn't want horseback riders anymore because of the horses following the, the road and it might affect the watershed to which I asked if they had specific outhouses for moose and bear and deer that were also in the prison camps <laughs> doing it. There was no answer to that, but they also wanted to, wanted to stop people from hiking because they said that wasn't, that wasn't good. It was detrimental to the area and also the people that were biking. Uh, on on mountain mountain biking, uh, needless to say, I, I, I stopped going just because they they were completely crazy with the with the things that they wanted to do. And as as, as uh, Mr. Stilling said, it's it's nothing but overreach. It it is uh, they're bound and determined to close the prison camps down, and they I think what they're trying to do, or or the Rutland State Park not necessarily just the prison camps, but the, the Rutland State Park. And th someone has to take them to task to just get, you know, understand that this is part of our community. I, I've lived in town for over 50 years. And one of the first things that I, I was, I'm a Worcester boy. They took me for a ride through the prison camps, the fellows from the volunteer fire department. And I was just amazed at, at how, how beautiful it was. And just to go th go through there, and it's part of the community, you know, and it's part of uh, the 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 canes we're talking about being from Barry. It's part of the community. It's part of Oakham, Petersham. It, it it's uh, uh, I'm sorry, Hubbardston. It it's part of the community, and these people are bound to determine the DCR are bound to determine to just shut it right down so nobody can use it. And and I don't understand why, and and. Um, well, anyway, I, I don't really want to get going, but uh, it's uh, it, it's really too bad what they're, what they're trying to pull all the time. And it, they, they keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. And, and I don't think it's right. And I think, as I said, this is just part of the community. And, and uh, it'd be nice if we could, if, if Rutland could take over that part, you know. But anyway, thank, thank you. That, that's about it. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mike Toomey. Mike Toomey, Spencer Mass. Uh, just wanted to bring a couple of meetings to your attention that you should probably know about. Tomorrow, the Stewardship Council meeting uh, is taking place, and that will be an early morning meeting, but they are also doing a similar format of Zoom and then breakout sessions. And then following that on the May 25th, uh, the legislative committee that is with the oversight for DCR has an interesting thing for the public meeting session on public listening coming up. And I think that the major thing that really has come home here for everybody's comments, the one thing I'm seeing consistently that shows up is a lack of communication. And that lack of communication has really come back to uh, one, it hits the historical side of looking at the historical committee being blindsided by it. It's also found that a lot of the general public never receives notice unless it's word of mouth about what's going on. And both committees, I know I've mentioned it to, D to the uh, stewardship committee meeting, which is tomorrow. Uh, I've mentioned in the past that they need to do better on their outreach. And the second meeting will allow us to also say that. So what I'd like to do is to propose that people try to tune into either one of those meetings or both if possible, and really start raising your hands and let people know that the number one thing we need to do is to get DCR to start acting 
as though they're a public agency that we can actually have some feedback in and hear about before it's a reactionary time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dick, I see you have your hand up again. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a, uh, a little bit, uh, I remember uh, back when Dan first started, uh, he had talked about you know, protecting the, the Ware River and the water that goes into Shaft 8. And I, I'm putting this out because I, I remember it so clearly, and it, it happened in Barry at the time when he spoke to us, that someday there may have to be a water treatment plant. And boy, that shocked me right then and there. So no matter what they're trying to do with our watershed, you know, someday it'll have to be treated. But um, one of the things I wanted to say, Ware River, going into Shaft 8, it goes up to Corbin. And, you know, you've heard how many years it takes before it comes back down and heads to Wachusett. And if it goes uh, from there to Wachusett, it's a very short period of time. So that's why they try to keep it clean. But how many times do they draw is a whole nother subject. It's not that much water. And, and lately, it's been very little that has been uh, put into shaft eight and sent out. And uh, just to let you know, I went to the prison camp today myself, was very upset because of the gates that were closed and had to drive way around to Long Pond. And when I got into the cells, and there's two bikers there taking pictures of the graffiti, and I was so amazed at how the graffiti that was there was so nice. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I see uh, Sarah Gillis, I believe, is waving. Sarah's on mute. OK. Um, Sarah, are you all set? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, excellent. Um, I actually have a, um, a, a, someone previously mentioned about the horses and the outhouses. I actually have a, um, an answer to that in why um, the horses, dogs, peoples, why there would be a difference difference is because of the artificial uh, food, what we consume is um, much more um, complicated. It's like you, you hear, you run across a fire, it doesn't have the same kind of chemicals and stuff like that. It, it's all about the, um, the intake, the food intake. So what comes out is it can be contaminated to the local water source. The other thing I want to talk about is um, people mentioned the artists. I'm actually from an area where a lot of our historical um, locations have been dismantled and torn down. I'm from Lynn. And so you're finding a lot of us are moving further out west, trying to find uh, what is left of um, Massachusetts historical sites. And Rutland uh, Prison Camp is one of the most well sought after. I, I would say that they are, um, it, it is considered a extremely amazing site. And when we heard about the possible demo, we were all horrified because we rely on the site for um, photography, for um, painting, for all this sort of, um, um, Sorry, my words aren't that, that great. Um, we rely on it for its uh, artistic integrity for the community. And if it was torn down, we would have to go even farther from our communities to visit. So Rutland Prison Camp is an important location that is in Massachusetts for the artistic community. Thanks. Thank you so much. 
All right. Is there anyone else in the, the audience um, that would like to speak? Uh, seeing no further hands. To, to the chair. Sure. I, I'd just like to make a, um, a motion that we draft a letter to DCR as well as the uh, governor's office outlining our frustrations in the handling of these actions, um, saying that we do not support removal of the structures and outlining the significant significant ties to the community and historic, historic significance. Second that. I think procedurally we would have to close the hearing before we did that. Before you assert motion. Before we yes. assert a motion and vote okay. on it. So I think everybody having heard this input, the intent of this obviously was to take this, digest it, and then if we wanted to act as a board, we could. Um, the other beauty of this, I will notice that it's being recorded uh, and maybe one <clears> of the <throat> silver linings of the Zoom era is this is something we can also present to DCR to say, look at all these different perspectives, look at the people that have come out um, to support uh, this effort. Um, that being said, um, I am willing to entertain uh, Mr. Nichols' motion after the hearing is closed, but I would like to give one more opportunity for anyone else that would like to speak. And seeing none, um, again, I would like to thank all of you for coming out and um, being a part of this. A lot of you have also been leading the charge in obtaining signatures. Um, I'd like to thank you for that as well. Um, again, a special thanks to our Representative Ferguson and Senator Gobi. Um, for being uh, strong advocates on this issue in our community. I think it's, it's certainly appreciated by everybody involved. Uh, that being said, I think we can close uh, real quick before we close. We have uh, Teresa Kane with her hand up again. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Robert Kane, Barry Mass. Uh, just a little more from a historical perspective. Um, Pre-colonial, before 1720, when Rutland became Rutland, uh, there was a Nipmuc area, and the Nipmuc Indians used those particular fields that were later became the prison camps for their growing of corn, bean, beans, and squash. So there's even a little bit more to it as far as pre-colonial history. That's it. Thank you very much. That's an excellent point, and also a a different perspective, so I, I'm glad that you shared that. Okay, so at this point, I don't think we need a motion to close the hearing. Yes. We do need a motion to close the hearing. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. So, motion and a second. Any further discussion from the Board of the Public? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Um, I'm used to calling Stillings, because I see him on the screen, but I will call uh, Benoit. Aye. Uh, Clark. Aye. Nichols. Nichols, aye. Whiteman. Whiteman, aye. Whiteman City, aye. Motion carries unanimous. At this point, Lyndon, uh, if you'd like to re restate your motion. Oh, I guess say it all over again? Yeah, well, I'm so going to test like your memory to... <laughs> here. <laughs> I'd like him to make a motion that we draft a letter to DCR as well as the governor's office regarding our um, dismay at the handling of the this action um, and saying that we do not support removal of any of the structures <laughs> and Outlining, outlining the significance of the historic um, part of our community. Second. Uh, I'm going to ask if you'd be willing to amend your motion to include a copy of this hearing for DCR's review, along with the letter. Oh, okay. So, I, I, yes, as amended. Okay. You amend your second, Mr. Clark? I amend my second. All right. Right, so. All right. Any further discussion from the board? Um, hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Benoit? Benoit, aye. Clark? Aye. Whiteman? Whiteman, aye. Nichols? Nichols, aye. And Resiti, aye. Motion carries unanimous. Um, thank you all again. Certainly appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to increased and better communication. And we will certainly be keeping the public apprised uh, with any information that we receive as we receive it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for your help. Hey, Peter, if you could, could you transfer this on to either a disc or something that we can send uh, with the letter? Yes, we can do that. Thank you, Peter. A disc? What is this, 1996? <laughs> <laughs> you said a USB drive, Ron. Come on. He did. Whatever, yeah, whatever <laughs> medium works the best for mail is what I was saying. I think we have a VCR copy. Yeah, let's get a VHS tape we can send along. 
Uh, All right. Um, wise guys. There's always going to be wise guys. <laughs> At this point, I'll entertain a motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All right. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Again, thank you all. Um, we'll have a roll call vote. Benoit? Benoit, aye. Clark? Aye. Whiteman? Whiteman, aye. Nichols? Nichols, aye. And Rossidi, aye. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.